Midjourney has released a new tool called Patchwork. This is a world narrative brainstorming tool. It uses their new Patchwork AI, which consists of multiple large language models to help drive creation of elements such as characters, events, places, and factions. It also integrates Midjourney's image models so that you can create images to represent these elements. Some example uses of Patchwork include planning a narrative for a story, a role-playing game or D&D campaign, or world building in general. Patchwork is a different workflow, and this is what they're calling a research preview. This means that it is not fully developed, there may occasionally be bugs, and it will likely look completely different in a few months. Today, we'll do a quick demo so that you have just enough information to get started building your own world. So first, you need to make sure that you have a Google account linked in Midjourney. On the website, click your username, go to Manage Profile, then connect your Google account if it isn't already. And don't worry, they will enable other login options in the future. To access Patchwork, go to patchwork.midjourney.com and log in with your Google account. When you first log in, you'll see a blank world like this. If you are a returning user to Patchwork, you'll be taken to one of your previously created worlds. As you build your world, you'll have different labels for things like characters, places, and events. Everyone starts with a world entity. Items such as notes and images can be attached to these entity labels as a way to group that information. This box here is a note scrap that in a moment will contain the premise for the world. It is attached to the world entity and that connection is shown by the label down here. I can click and drag either of these around, rename the world by clicking inside the label up here, or to have Patchwork come up with a name, delete the name, click the light bulb and a name will be generated for you. This note scrap, as I mentioned, is necessary to set the premise for the world. Click inside the scrap to edit it, or to have Patchwork create a premise for you, delete the scrap, click on the world entity, then the light bulb, and a new world premise is generated. Anything that you add here affects the entities that you create from here on out. So you can tell it the types of characters that you expect to create, events that you expect to happen, rules that govern your world, etc. On the left, we have a menu that lets us create new entities such as characters, events, places, props or objects, and factions. As you develop your world, you'll likely want to create images of these things. So what I recommend doing first is creating a note scrap that contains the mid-journey prompt settings you want to use for images. Say, for example, you want to use a specific SREF code for every image created within this world. To do this, click on Note, then click somewhere to place the note, and type in the prompt settings that you want to use for the images in your world. Next, we need to link this to our world entity. Click the Note Scrap, then click this Link button, and click on either the world entity or any other scrap that is linked to the world entity. Next, we'll try creating some example images of this world. So I'll click on this scrap and select the paint tray icon. Then click and drag on the canvas to make space for the images. Now we are interfacing with Midjourney's image models. Everything else that happens within this world uses the Patchwork AI. But in this box, when you're creating images, you are talking to Midjourney's image models. This prompt was just taken from our world premise. You can edit it or leave it as is. It also includes the SREF code that we linked to the world entity. And the shape of this box will be used as the aspect ratio for the images unless you add the aspect ratio parameter. Click paint to begin image generation. Now your speed mode settings do not currently sync with patchwork like they do between the web and discord. Patchwork uses fast mode by default if you want to use relax mode, you need to add dash dash relax to any image prompts. All image generation also uses quality 0.5 by default to help save your fast hours. Okay, now we have some images of this world. I can click and drag to move these around and press the X on any selected image to remove it from the world. All images created within a world will show up on your organize page where you can upscale, edit and create variations. Next, let's create our first character in this world by clicking the character tool. Then click anywhere to place the character entity. I'll add a name for the character. And I'll let Patchwork come up with a description for this character by clicking the light bulb. 
Remember, Patchwork will use the world premise and other linked note scraps to inform the character descriptions. Next, I'll create an image for this character by clicking the paint tray, draw out the image space. Again, you can edit any of the prompt text and settings here and submit. Okay, this looks like a good one. Let's get rid of the others. To select multiple items, hold shift and then click and drag and press delete to remove. Now, what if you already have a character reference that you wanna bring into your world? Let's do that. I'll create a new character entity. We're going to bring Wesley into this world. So I'll copy the URL of his character reference image, come back over to Patchwork and click on the note tool. Then click somewhere over here to place the note, paste in the image URL. And now we have a tiny image of Wesley. To link it to this character, I need to click the link button and then select his character entity. Now, when I go to create new images of this character, it will use that as a character reference. Don't forget to lower the character weight if you want to change the character's outfit. Now we have a couple of characters and you can start building out the storyline. Maybe develop a set of places that are key to the story, create major events that take place or different factions that are working behind the scenes. I've mostly been using the light bulb to let Patchwork come up with everything so far just to explore what's possible, but you should edit these scraps as much as you want to inject your own ideas into the storyline. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go through all of the functionality today. We'll save that for a future video after they've made some updates, which are expected to be plentiful in the coming months. But there are some other important things that you should know. First, save often. Things are a little unstable with Patchwork at the moment. Clicking save will save a JSON file to your computer. So if something happens to your world, you can load it back in with that file. Next, be sure to check the sharing permissions for your world. The default right now is view, which means others can see it, but only you can edit it. Set it to none if you want it to be totally private, or you can add people by their mid-journey ID and they can develop the world with you. Profile adds your personalization. Be sure to link it to the world entity so that it affects downstream image generation. Portal lets you create a link to another world. Place the portal, then click it to go inside, and here you'll see a huge list of other worlds that you can link to. These ones that say owned are all other worlds that I've started working on. I can link to one of these or click up here to start a new world. I think navigating between worlds is probably one of the trickier things at the moment. Back to our demo world, I wanna mention that if you have images that you wanna use as style references rather than the number codes, you can bring them in like I did for Wesley's character reference image or you can use any of the images that you already have in your world as style reference. Just click the rainbow icon, then link it to your world entity. So this was really a bare bones demo of the new patchwork tool, but I wanted to give just enough information to help you get started. I know this tool won't be for everyone. They will be making significant improvements to it in 2025. Once it's a little more developed, I'll consider doing a deep dive video, but if you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.